This week on the Jock and Nerd Podcast, we react to trailers for The Matrix Resurrections and the Hawkeye Disney Plus show, discuss the effects the box office for Shang-Chi is having on future Marvel releases, and review episode five of Marvel's What If series. All that and more on this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Monday, September 13th, 2021. This is Norm MacDonald, and you're listening to the, uh, uh, hang on, I got it here. Uh, it says, the Jock and Nerd Podcast, known for their series of gay erotica found on Amazon, huh? No? That's not that? Oh. <laughs> well, I fucked that up, I guess. Check. Check one. All right. This is for all you fans out there. Let's give it up. We talk it, we heard it. We fucking disturb it. We talk it, we heard it. We spoil it, alert. Oh, yeah. Hello, what's up, listener? How's it going? Welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast, where we give you comic book and superhero TV and movie news, reviews, and whatever we choose. <laughs> Jock and Nerd! My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. Not joining us this week is one rug boy. What? Lame. Did you hear what happened to rug boy, Anthony? What happened? Oh, well, this time he got attacked by a zombie puppet. Then he fell through a wormhole. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah, but you know what? It's okay because Anthony, as you know, this is just a variant rug boy. These have all been variants. <laughs> We've gone through several of them. In fact, I ordered a bunch more just to have on stock. You know what? They're on back order. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> so we'll get. How long it. did it take you to think of this? We'll get just until when Loki started, and now there's multiverse and there's variants, but, and then the and then you threw in just the zombies. Actually, thing. I just came up with this because we just uh, yeah. No, it took me a, about thirty seconds. But that's the truth. They're all variant rug boys. Here's the thing. Rug boy doesn't know he's a variant. The variants don't know. So he just, we get a new one. He shows up. It's like nothing ever happened. I like that. Right? Not funny. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Anyways, he'll be back. We'll get the shipments coming in next week. I got an Amazon notice. The variant rug boys on this way. In the meantime, we have important geek news to discuss. The Jock and Ned Podcast. Oh, we got a couple of fun trailers to talk about to dig into. Uh, the first one being a, uh, a movie from a franchise that hasn't had a new movie for 18 years. And that is The Matrix 4. It's called the, Ma the Matrix Resurrections. The official trailer came out. This thing's coming out December 22nd on HBO Max and in the theaters. It's going to be an amazing Christmas Day watch at home <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and in this one. You have uh, only one Wachowski returning, Lana Wachowski directing and writing. Of the sisters. Of the Wachowski sisters. Yeah, the other one apparently doesn't want to have anything to do with the franchise anymore. Is that right? That's what I read somewhere. Hmm. This one does and has brought back fucking Neo and Trinity and Anthony. Were you excited for this before this? Or are you now? What did you think of this trailer? So I watched this trailer. I have to admit. I've only seen the first Matrix. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too bad because the other two just go downhill. I, yeah, Ooh. I've, I've, I remember seeing the Lobby first Matrix John. as a kid. Yeah, thinking it was cool, and then just never getting around to seeing the other two in the theater. And then I just heard that they were bad. I revisited the Matrix once we did those reviews right. of the 1999 movies, yep. and I went, "Oh, the Matrix is really freaking good. It's amazing." And I just still haven't gotten re or gone and revisited or not revisited ever touched the the other two reloaded and revolutions because again you guys said everyone has said they were bad and i don't want that to taint my thoughts on the very first matrix so having watched not seen those this might be confusing. and then watching this trailer yeah i was very confused yeah because you're missing on. a big part of the end of the story at the end of the third movie like huge things happen i can tell you if you're never gonna watch it but you can tell me so, you can tell me, but I was very confused. I was like, "Is the I thought the Matrix was done. I mean, it was technically sort of. 
Okay, so real quick, here's what you have to know going into this. It's kind of crazy. The setup at the end of the third movie, the me and I might fuck this up too because it's so convoluted. But Neo eventually meets the architect, the guy who created everything, uh, the machines and everything. And the architect has this huge monologue, and it's very clunky, and I, it's hard to even understand what's happening. But basically, he tells him that we have created the Matrix six times. And six times we have destroyed the Matrix and six times there's always been a human rebellion and six times there's always been a Neo. And this is always supposed to happen. Oh, uh, yeah. And so and so he fights Agent Smith and like absorbs him and goes into him and blows him Who up. Fights Agent uh, Smith? Neo does. Okay. So Neo because Agent Smith is the rogue uh, program. So he makes a truce with the machines. They chill and they help him take out agent smith the virus in the matrix and in return he also he gets blinded in that movie during this fight uh with agent smith as an actual guy in the real world it is so fucking confusing so he, he his eyes are done and who's done neo neo's eyes both get burned oh, out of their socket uh and then they take his body the machines take neo's body at the end of the movie and he's presumed dead and also trinity is dead and yes so this is possibly another incarnation, the seventh matrix, or maybe more, and possibly someone has has restarted actual Neo from that movie, and which is why it would explain why he doesn't remember. But I don't know why Trinity, why they don't remember each other. Hmm. The theory is that this movie, the re, the Matrix, has been restarted. Yes, he tells them we've had six Matrixes. I should have put a spoiler alert, but these movies have been out for fucking twenty years. Yeah, these movies have been out for a while. They, there's been six Matrixes, and and it's they built and destroyed it six times, and it's just a thing that happens over and over again. So that's one way back. Because, but really, I was like, what is this? What can you tell? What more story can you tell? The trailer has the red and blue pill. It seems like. By what you're saying, this is just a restart of like a new Matrix. Yeah, right? and when I kept when I watched it again, I was like, "Wait a minute, is are they just gonna do the first movie again? Is is that what we're watching? Oh, shit. Right? Because you see him, he's taking blue pills. Also, Keanu is fucking 57 years old. Looks fantastic. He's he almost good. 60 years old. Got gray hair too for that. Oh, for that age. he still has the awesome like 90s grunge hair that I always wanted. I could never have. Uh, but so he, he's taking the blue pills and, uh, you see Yaya Abdul Mateen. The cast is pretty crazy too, as uh, what looks like a young Morpheus. I don't think it's a young Morpheus. I think it's another incarnation of Morpheus. Lawrence Fishburne is not in this. Only, uh, Keanu and Carrie Ann Moss returning. So it's, it looks like from the trailer that both Keanu and Carrie Ann Moss is uh, Felix, Felix. <laughs> Felix. Who's Felix? Uh, is he in this? Neo. Yeah, oh, Neo. <laughs> Neo and Trinity. Yeah. Felix. Who the hell's <laughs> fucking Felix? It sounds like it looked like for me like they were rediscovering who they either it's a new matrix, right? Yeah. And they're discovering who they who they're supposed to be, or maybe they've carried over from the old Matrix. Yeah, maybe they have memories from the old one. I, d I love this trailer. It's really well made. It doesn't give away anything. I'm still like, what the fuck is happening? What is this movie about? You don't know, but there's a lot of nostalgia in the action, in the way they're they're choreographing the action that reminds you of how fucking awesome the first movie was. You know, the force push is fucking badass. Here's what I don't get. Can you even make this kind of movie today? Because there's that quick shot where, like, everybody's on their phones and Neo looks and everyone's head is down. So we've essentially embraced the Matrix and we're we're cool with it. We don't give a fuck. How is this relevant still? What can you do? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting thought. I'm, I'm trying to think of like what this would be an allegory to now. Like I will log on to a thing and forget all my who. Somebody posted on our jock and nerd page. Lenny Romero posted this from at Kenny Keel on Twitter. He goes, how does a Matrix movie work in 2021? I'm supposed to be scared of living in a fake reality trap forever in 1999. Shit. Frost my tips and log me in. Oh, shit. <laughs> is what it said. And I was like, I, I feel you. I get it. You're right. How does this work? Well, I guess now we are like, since we're all connected to our phones, yeah. we're all like more, it goes back to Elon Musk kind of said it, we're like, we're all basically cyborgs at this point because our phones are so connected to us that, you know, we, we can pull up any sort of information at the, at the, you know, drop of a hand. So in essence, we're all like walking computers. I mean, I think this will be a really because remember he was a computer hacker and I think this could be a really interesting thing to use now because this pro proliferation of phones was not around even mm -hmm. in 99, uh, even when the later movies came out, really, it was still like early. 
So 18 years, a lot has changed. Yeah, I was I was very confused by watching that trailer. But then again, I haven't seen the last two movies. So here's my final question is essentially, if you look at all this, they've made only one good Matrix movie, right? There's only mm-hmm. one good one. Should we just set ourselves up to be disappointed? Can they save the franchise and bring it back? I don't know. I mean, the, they again haven't seen the last two, but they I'm going <laughs> off what you said. You should watch them, though. They are. I interesting. probably will. I will probably watch them. Are they confusing? They're kind of confusing, and they just like miss. They, they. I don't know. I just I don't like where it goes. The only thing is the Wachowskis. Yeah. Are have done every movie. Yes. So together. it's not like we're um getting a new perspective. Maybe maybe time has helped. Yeah. I just I did read this article just now on Collider, Lana Wachowski talking about uh, how it she had just lost her father and then a friend of hers died and then her mom died. And then she goes, I felt comfort in being able to bring back to life Neo and Trinity for this movie. You know, so it, this it connected with her that way that she got to bring mm. something back to life after suffering this loss. So maybe it'll be personal, but also. Have the Wachowskis made any good movies since then? No, 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 not really. Floppy no, John. Not Let's so see. much if you think about what they've made, right? Yeah, let's see what they've directed since then. Speed Racer? No. Yeah. Cloud Atlas? No. Yeah, that's, Jupiter Ascending? Yeah. No. That's really it. Yeah. That's really all they've done. So... I'm gonna. This isn't doesn't. This isn't lining up to be very good. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna temper my expectations. Sloppy John, and I'm glad it's gonna be on HBO Max. You can just stay at home and watch it. And if it's great, then fantastic. The trailer looks great. The trailer. The trailer is very well. You cut. know, they got the what? I'll be it a little bit confusing. The White Rabbit song, which is it's fun. It's a little bit on the nose. It's very trippy, but the trailer is trippy and the the, the scenes. Uh, regarding the cast, here's who else is in this. Jessica Henwick is in this. Yaya Abdul Mateen. Second. He's Morpheus. Uh, he's more. He is actually playing Morpheus, but according to Wikipedia, a variant, a different version, a new incarnation hmm. of Morpheus. Except the Trinity and and Neo are the same from the last Matrix. Christina Ricci is in this. Priyanka Chopra Jones uh, Jonas. Oh yeah, she married a Jonas brother. She did. Wow, lucky Jonas brother. Uh, she's playing a character who was like a little girl. There was a little Indian girl at the end of the third movie. In the third movie, uh, rumor is she's playing her grown up. Mm. Uh, Jonathan Groff, Neil Patrick Harris, you see uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, who was in. Uh, wasn't she in the originals? I feel like she was. She was in the. She was in the one, second or third one in the sequels. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. I'll tell you what the coolest thing was, though. Before they put what's the, the coolest thing? Before they put the trailer out, they put out. They brought back this website they had when the movies were out, and it was a very viral, popular, crazy website called WhatIsTheMatrix.com. Uh, have you heard about this? Do you, ever, do you remember this? Oh, man. I think I do now that you bring it up. I, I don't remember logging on, but I do remember hearing buzz that you could go online. So before the trailer came out, what is the matrix.com lit up again? And they were simply, it was white and there was two pills. There was a red pill and a blue pill and you would click it, right? And it would take mm-hmm. you to this promo video. And this video had these quick clips, but hair was the fucking craziest, coolest thing. In the video, seamlessly worked in, would pop up the exact time you are watching in this video. And not only that, in the voiceover, the guy goes, at this time, at 8.13. He, in the voiceover, and seamlessly in the video is the exact time you are watching this trailer. And it showed you these quick clips. And if you went back and you clicked the other pill, or you came back later, the time would change. He would say the new time, and you would see completely new clips. There was like thousands of clips that were randomized and served based on what you clicked. But hmm. the fucking fact that it would put the time and the guy would say the time you're watching the video right there. I was like, oh, trippy at the time, old right? Shit. No, this. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound all that crazy. Now, No, this is now this happened. Now you can experience it now. Let's wait. Let me see. It is crazy. Mate. What is the ma- What is it called? What is the matrix dot com? I have a link in the show notes right here. Click oh, it. Gotcha. Okay. Let me click that. Now shit. you have to dig past the trailer. The trailer will pop up. You X yeah. that out and you'll see. Two pills. Click on one of the pills and l- let me click on one. Let me get rid of this fucking trailer. Yeah, and then listen to what he says. This is, and you'll see. I'm watching this. There's a little matrix thing coming down. Yeah. Okay. What's real is here. 8:20 p.m. That's right now. Oh, 
What the fuck? What is the? I don't understand what the how the time thing makes you so crazy. Dude, that's crazy. Do you realize the programming? It seamlessly blended into the video and the voiceover. If you go back a minute later, it's gonna say eight twenty one. The guy's gonna say right now in this moment eight twenty one p.m. Oh. That's wild, and it's is that wild? It's wild. I didn't know that it's, it was it's, that it's, wild. I don't think that's easy to do. It's it's a. Oh. I mean, I've never seen a customized movie marketing experience. Like it's very cool. I thought it was cool. <laughs> All right, maybe it didn't fucking impress you. Whatever. <laughs> I think that shit. If you if you're a coder, it doesn't matter if you click on the red or the blue pill. It'll show you different things, and I think a different person is talking. But it all the time uh, comes up also. Gotcha. Yeah, I wasn't that impressed. God damn it! I thought it was the most impressive <laughs> thing. I was like, oh shit, look at this. I thought you were talking about something that happened in '99. I was yeah. like, this happened yesterday. <laughs> it's going well for 99 that does sound really impressive Listen, if you know anything about programming you would know and video video <laughs> internet video anyways <laughs> listener let me know if you were impressed join our facebook group and tell me that no this is dumb or that's fucking cool because i've never seen shit like that it's called jock and nerd nation it's a closed group just for our listeners we're all in there rugs is in there you can tell him uh tell him you're waiting on his next variant uh, he'll have the password for Facebook. I give them to all the variants, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, join it today and meet all the fun fans who are into all the same shit we are. Okay, let's move on to the other trailer. Just dropped today. It is for Marvel's next show on Disney Plus, premiering November 24th. Thanksgiving is Hawkeye, starring Hawkeye. Jeremy Renner, uh, Haley Steinfeld. Uh, and a bunch of other people, I'm sure that they are not going to let us know because it might be spoilery. Um, Anthony, are you, yes. uh, what is your excitement level for this one? What'd you think of this trailer? So, yeah, it came out today, Monday. Wasn't expecting to see it. Nope. I got to say, I mean, I, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, the vibe of the trailer was so, my friend kind of nailed it. He was like, it's kind of feels like Home Alone meets die hard yes, type thing it's an action comedy i kind of dig it i i, I, I did kind of dig yeah. it though i was like this isn't what at all what i was expecting Deeper. i was expecting some sort of um, a little heavier maybe a little more serious yeah a little heavier a little bit of a um like a yeah like a darker maybe um more grounded show and I, maybe it is very grounded but the it was very light i, I mean it's definitely because of that song and the way it was just edited but um I mean, I guess they're taking a lot of inspiration from the Matt Fraction run. Yep, David A. Ha, Matt you Fraction. Read that. I did, and there, it does. You see a lot of things from there, like uh, Lucky the Pizza Dog, the tracksuit mob. Uh, it's called the tracksuit Draculas. They're great. I love the shot where he throws the Molotov cocktail through the window, and he fucking <laughs> catches it and throws, throws it right, it right back. back. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so. <laughs> I love that there's it look it reminds me of that book and that book is like a quirky it's funny there's action and so I love this and t- Christmas co- action comedy uh with Hawkeye he's wearing a hearing aid you'll notice which is something in the comics he does suffer hearing loss and that comes heavy into play uh in a lot of the issues cuz he he has to rely on and vision and like he can't hear anything um I love you see Kate Bishop. She's wearing the Ronin outfit and she's fucking Ronin. And the news is like, oh, Ronin's back. And he's like, who the fuck is this? That's just and it's some little girl. And he's like, who are you? Uh, you see this quick clip of a fucking Rogers, the musical, a Captain yeah. America musical. Um, that's great. Apparently, I read another article in the 80s. They tried to do a Captain America musical like legit for Broadway. They even had a casting call and cast a dude, and I believe that's as far as it went, and it's probably a good thing. It's going to be fun to see who cameos in this show. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, I was just, I was so caught off guard by the tone, in a good way, though. Like, I like that Marvel seems to be, you know, there, there's always a sense of, we talked about this last week, of Marvelisms and throwing in the comedy, but this one seems to intentionally be, just straight up Christmas comedy. This is like another genre too, completely yeah. different from the three we've already gotten. And yeah, much more, even more so than Spider Man. It definitely felt um, like kind of not like Kitty in a good way. Oh, I see what like, you're saying. Again, the Home Alone, like the Home Alone vibes, where it's like you have you have the Haley Steinfeld as kind of this kid that's thrown into everything, and she just is also a great archer. Yeah. But like the line where she's like. Like she says something about like being one of the best arch. Everyone thinks she's the best archer in the world, right. and he's like, 
is that are you one of the people that say that she's like yep <laughs> <laughs> it's got dangerous arrows no it looks fun it looks yeah it looks like a fun lighthearted you know buddy action how, comedy. how many episodes is it supposed to be do you know well i'm let's yeah. see i'm not sure i imagine it's gonna run the similar they're hour long let's see probably six to eight hawkeye is scheduled debut on disney plus november I think 24th it's six, six episodes six episodes so that'll take you to christmas time past christmas uh which is great there's gonna be a lot to watch and then they'll probably miss marvel will probably premiere january maybe february there's also a so we'll know we know that if if you don't want to be spoiled it doesn't you don't have okay, to Okay, well, spoiler alert. Uh, uh <laughs> spoiler alert. What do we know? Not really all that spoilery, but if you're on Wikipedia, yeah. Alakua Cox is playing oh, Maya Lopez a, a Echo. Echo is going to be like the bad guy. Yeah. So we do I think there's a quick shot of her in here. You don't really get to see oh, a lot. Oh, she's the bad guy. I think she's the bad guy. I thought that was a good guy. Oh, Echo? I thought Echo was the villain. Fish, no, she's a superheroine. Oh, she's good. She is the adoptive daughter of Kingpin in the comics, and she's a Native American oh, shit. and deaf. Oh, oh, shit. oh adoptive and she daughter. She can mimic anyone's abilities. Of Kingpin, you know, this also kind of, this is what I thought of. Could anyone, there was somebody on our Facebook group who posted a slight rumor, and I was like, this kind of reminds me of the Netflix shows also in a way. Could anyone from the Netflix shows possibly cameo? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. On yeah, yeah, yeah. this show, we have a lot of great characters there that would tie in. You just mentioned one. Well, and they're, and they're already saying that Echo is going to get her own spin off. Oh, okay. They're going to fast track that one. Give everybody. And we know from Black Widow yeah. that oh, Yelena Belova, Black Widow, yes. Florence she, Pugh should probably be in there. She's going to pop up as a cameo. And then maybe we see Val also. Yep. Oh, yeah. Perhaps uh, Val. Julia Louis Dreyfus. Well, we also n- kind of are seeing the tracks being paved. If does that fucking make right, sense? Yeah, tracks track. being laid, <laughs> the t- road being paved yeah. for the Young Avengers. So we know that yep. Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop, yeah. bi- Bishop, Bishop, Bishop yes. <laughs> should uh, also get some uh, get, get some runway to eventually spread her wings into another. Or show. is she like the next Hawkeye? Either does he retire? She might be the does next he Hawkeye. get killed? It's definitely setting her up. But she feels heavily featured. I mean, the show's going to be all about her and him. Yeah, but but again, really uh, fun. I can't wait. Again, for this. Wasn't expecting yeah. that. Very yeah, looks very fun. You know, every every as we've mentioned, every Marvel show has its comedy, but this one seems much more intentionally comedic than, um, like to compare it to other things. What you would call it? WandaVision was a was a play on old TV shows. At least that's what we saw in the trailers. Um, with the you know, it was like kind of a mystery. It was a mystery, yeah. Yeah, Captain America or Falcon and Winter Soldier was more of a like espionage yep. spy thriller. thriller. Yeah. And then Loki, Loki just was science more of a science fiction fantasy romp. Yeah, like a travel science fiction, um, like detective. Oh yeah, and a detective kind of crime detective procedural. kind of mystery, yeah. Yeah, crime procedural type thing. And this one seems just fun as shit. This is Lethal <laughs> Weapon meets fucking Die yeah, Hard meets weapon, Home die Alone. Hard. Yep, what if yep. Kevin McAllister was good at a bow and arrow? What do you think? I use that song. That song seems is pretty overplayed. What is the song? It's the most wonderful. Oh, time that fucking Christmas song! Year. Yeah, no, that was it. It got it got, it got kind of annoying. Ding it kept coming dong, up. Yes, I'm like, ding. I get it. It's Christmas. I love. It's Christmas just a, it's songs. a super overplayed song, yes. but it did set a good tone for like, oh, this is because this trailer starts off very serious yeah. or seemingly serious, and then it just right when Haley Steinfeld reveals herself, she's like, "You're Hawkeye." We're get, you know what we're getting a fun Christmas show and like it was part of Spider Man No Way Home I think also takes place at Christmas maybe at the same time but I just love we'll have like a fun Marvel Christmas show to watch do- around Christmas and and this is the last one of the year that's right? gonna be the last one of the year yeah because your your Miss Marvel doesn't start up this year no does it? it was supposed to but it got pushed back and mm. so early next year I'm thinking that'll be the next show that the, they'll gotcha. probably announce and we'll get a trailer. I can't wait for this. This looks like so much fun. It does look good. I'm actually pretty yeah. excited. Yeah. All right. It. Let's talk about uh, Shang-Chi for a second, specifically oh. the box office numbers. 
and a little bit of trouble getting this movie into China. This is both things are related. Okay, well, let's hear. So it. second weekend, you know, this is big, especially how did the experiment go? This was an experiment, Bob Chapek. Uh, second weekend, Shang Chi does really well. It made another thirty five point eight million dollars. Oh shit! That is only a fifty three percent drop. Black Widow dropped seventy percent in its second weekend. So box office wise, it's doing really good. Uh, in fact, domestically, it's at a hundred and like forty six million dollars. Wow! Black Widow domestic run right now is only a hundred and eighty three million dollars. Oh yeah, it's definitely going to beat Black Widow. And worldwide, it's sitting at two hundred and fifty six million dollars. Not bad at all. But yeah, it may out earn Black Widow domestically, and it should. I think. I think I saw my. I might have saw a headline somewhere. Might be wrong, but I think I did see it on John Campia's show, where it was like Shang Chi has one of the lowest week over week, weekend over weekend drops in MCU history. Wow, yeah, fifty three. Well, Black Panther. I heard him. He said, "Here's the numbers: between fifty and sixty percent is average. That's where you want to be. You want to be in mm-hmm. between." Black Panther actually had a, a lower drop before. It was like forty five percent. Oh, which wow. is unheard of, below 50. So for Shang-Chi to fall in like 53% is very good. It, that's yeah, great. that's yeah. very good. And it, like you said during the review, it's definitely, I think it has legs. People want to see it again. I can't wait in like 40 days till it's out on Disney Plus to watch it again. And that 40-day turnaround is really, um, it's a game changer. It's kind of brilliant because I think it may actually push subscriptions when people are like, fuck, I want to watch this again. It's on Disney Plus. I'm going to sign up. Now I'm going to sign up. And even like kind of the mindset of because I feel like you watch movies and then with that ninety day window, it's usually ninety days you forget about it. it you comes forget back about it when you right. forget about it. When by the time it comes back, I'm almost like yeah. Unless it's a movie I just absolutely love, yeah. By the time it comes back, I'm like I'm already moved on to something else. I don't I always thought it was too to long. Yeah. yeah, but people were still going to see it. You know, there was days where movies would be in the theaters six months a year, long oh, time yeah, ago. Titanic, he was in movies theaters for a long ass time so was avatar that shit doesn't happen anymore like you don't no, see that no. movie stay a movie staying for a year like when's the last time we saw that sometimes you'll see it with the oscars where they'll release a movie and then it'll right. get it such good back, oscar though. buzz it'll come back yeah like parasite yeah right but that's fantastic so before we um discuss what that means for the experiment moving forward this movie still does not have a release date for china and uh, Australia, I think, is still closed. Australia is just closed. Sorry. We're closed for business. You would think this movie that has the first Marvel Asian lead in a superhero movie, a movie that opens entirely in Mandarin, in Chinese, uh, you would think this would be a hit over there. It is not coming out there, and it's, Why? it's not expected anytime soon. Oh, no. Here's one thing that may be an issue. Simu Lu was born in China. Immigrated mm-hmm. with his family to Canada at the age of five and then starred in Kim's Convenience and posed for stock photos. I'm sure you've all seen those by now. They're great. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 2017, Simu gave a interview with CBC. His comments have resurfaced. He basically, at the time, he called China a third world country uh, where people were, quote, dying of starvation. The interview is not available online. It has surfaced recently on the Weibo, which is like Chinese Twitter. And that's led some people to say they would boycott if Shang-Chi was released in China due to the comments. Uh, so Black Widow also did not come out in uh, China. And this is the second biggest movie market in the world. What he said, I, he wasn't lying. Here's the thing. We don't, well, yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't, don't, I can't speak on that, but I, it seems like I don't think he's making a lot of things up have. about China and why his father moved away from there. Yeah, there's people that have very strong opinions about living in China. But man, this just uh, highlights the fact that China's got us by the balls, people. They really do. If you think about yeah, it, yeah, you know, the only thing is though is, I mean, it definitely, they definitely, you definitely want if you're Marvel, you want your movies released in China because they're a huge market, as you mentioned. That being said, they Marvel's very happy with Shang Chi, yeah. and you know they're releasing more movies now. Exclu- like I think that experiment that Bob. Oh, we'll get into the results. Yes, yeah, it's it's going pretty well so far yeah. because they're they're looking to uh, stay exclusive to movie theaters because 
they're doing well there. It seems like China is very upset with Marvel because of maybe this, and they have Chloe Zhao doing Eternals, and she's said some not so flattering yeah, things that's about the other China. Thing. She, and she's Chinese born. Yeah. Oscar winner doing the next movie that's probably not going to be in China either uh, you know the thing is Disney has they bend over backwards to China to be in China with their the theme parks and the movies maybe they'll be okay if this doesn't open there the only thing is I think China in general it's like I'm reading this article Free Guy is the only movie yeah. that, from Hollywood that was yeah. in China yeah. so I think maybe China in general is just you know because of maybe coronavirus and some of the comments by our uh, people in power about China's involvement and cover up perhaps that maybe China's just pissed off at America <laughs> and they're just not. I mean, it's very plausible. They're just like, fuck you. And they're not releasing any. American yeah, oh, movies absolutely. Or hardly any. And that's what I say. So it might not just be a Marvel thing, but a American thing. Well, that's what I'm saying. They got to spy the balls. They can do that. And there's really nothing you can do. You just you got to you got to play ball with them. If you want uh, the if money, you want your movies on. There. Yeah. Yeah. You see this all the time with a lot of big companies that uh, it's it's always interesting the way big companies take a role you know in in social issues here but then they also work with china yeah so like where where are you drawing the line so it you know to as, as a comparison avengers endgame it made 2.7 billion dollars billion 20 percent of that came from china oh shit oh, wow. so yeah that's a big fucking slice of the pie there Especially if they love the movie, you're going to make a lot. So we'll see. Now, okay, looking behead. Look, let's talk about the, the looking behead. Looking, looking to behead. Looking to behead. When we're not in Saudi what? Arabia. Calm down. Jesus I, this is why I, Saudi Arabia. Oh, why God. I left that country. Oh, no, shit. I'm not from there. Uh, looking ahead, looking to this Mashallah. experience. Inshallah, we will talk about Bob Chapek's results of his experiment. The, like you said, the experiment is going well. Yes, at Biden. And the experiment being they did not put Shang-Chi on Disney+. Plus. In fact, it's going so well. Uh, Eternals is reportedly getting the same treatment, exclusive theatrical release. It will it will be skipping the Disney Plus premiere access. Same 45-day window in November. Wow. Uh, and basically, I mean, JPEG's like, look, we made $90 million over Labor Day. Uh, we're going to be fine. We're, putting, we're doing the same thing. Yeah, and La- Labor Day is notoriously a bad weekend to release movies, as I've mentioned before. So, yeah, they... Yeah, you can definitely... Bang. Eternals is obviously going to come out. You know that Spider-Man... That's... that's uh, no yeah, Way Home is definitely going to come out now. Deal. You know, unless things get just insane with the virus and people are just are just out of their minds. It definitely shows, as I, as I mentioned in my review last week, that I think people will come out for big movies still i think people still want to do things and, and i think they were excited to see the, a new chapter a new new like black widow that was new it was new it was new this was finally a new chapter moving forward and it got everybody fucking out it got them in the seats why, why do you think uh i have my thoughts on this but i want to ask you why do you think this did so well but suicide squad did? oh fuck well the R rated right away. The R rated is uh, that also had like a seventy seven percent second week drop. So yeah. right away, the R rated in this is going to slice off a huge number. The same day release on HBO Max, you're slicing off another thing. This honestly, why another this, thing? This Shang Chi has the head start. It's PG thirteen. Yeah. It's you can only see it here, and the representation is there, and you have a new Marvel superhero, and I think people are seeing it again and i think they told their friends this movie is so much fun you got to take the kids go see it and and uh, the word of mouth is spreading i agree with all yeah. of that i also think you know those those the first two are, are big are already big knocks the third one of the third biggest knocks is just the bad buzz from the original suicide oh, squad oh that doesn't help either yes but that doesn't help and they didn't really also yeah 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 you didn't and you didn't really know what this yeah. was if you just weren't in the know they didn't like set we it are. apart enough yeah and the fourth biggest thing is I think it's just Shang-Chi, although is a, a very obscure character, it's a little bit more, like I would say, palatable to most people in that, oh, it's a new Marvel hero, right? Like you kind of know what you're going to get in, in terms of this is a new character in the Marvel universe. Whereas Suicide Squad it's is dark, like... bro. Well, it's not even dark. It's just like, look at like, it's like all these obscure characters yes. and like you don't really know who they are and like it's and it's a fucking weird like 
hor- like well, not horror, but a weird like vi- insanely violent. You, you couldn't describe that movie from the trailers. Like you had no idea. It's yeah. so weird. It, there's a there. It's like a, an amalgamation of like a family violent yeah. comedy. Like so, it's just a weird thing, so it's right? More like, niche, and and I mean, although and although it's super, it look and yeah, it's super yeah. niche. And although you could say, well, Guardians did well. Yes, Guardians did well, but it didn't have a, a previous bad movie, which was the which was the yeah, original. Yeah, and you Suicide had a cute Squad. tree and a cute raccoon. You're like, what the fuck is this? They made it work. Yeah, I think for whatever, and I like. Don't get me wrong. I think the Suicide Squad is the best DC oh, film. Oh, fantastic! But I think that there was so much going against it. DC in retrospect, they especially. got like a Suicide Squad sandwich now. If you rank the movies, top and bottom, <laughs> and Suicide yeah, Squad Squad sandwich. But uh, but yeah, no, that movie, and it did, it's a shame because it was so good. But James Gunn literally picked Polka Dot Man because he's like, I'm gonna pick the most fucking ridiculous, dumbest character they have. And just go with it. And so he did that on purpose. It doesn't help. No big names, really. But it, God, is that such a fucking fun movie? It's a great. I, I, it. I think it's a great movie. Yeah. yeah. But I love Shang Chi too, and it's just a whole, it's a whole different thing. So, uh, the other thing this uh, initiated was new dates for Marvel movies, untitled Ooh. movies. So the, let's hear okay, it. Here's there's a crazy stat in here. Moving forward, we have Eternals this November, Spider Man No Way Home in December. Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness in March 2022, Thor Love and Thunder in May 2022, Black Panther Wakanda Forever July 2022, The Marvels November 2022. Four movies in 2022. We're getting four movies this year too. 2023 has Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania in February, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 in May, and then July, October, and November untitled dates five movies whoa five movies? yes so the oh, the july date it says rumored release date for fantastic four july 28 2023 october 6th it says rumored release date for blade and that's all they have but five fucking mcu movies in 2023 to look forward wow. to and then 2024 given a february may july november so the pattern of months makes sense they've been hitting these months spreading them out but fucking five movies in 2023 i was like holy shit geek boner five movies what, holy shit what could they be are, are those are those last two well rumored fantastic four and blade yeah. wonder if those are considered phase four or phase five I'd win this phase four and i mean we right. also we have a uh, you know what's his name is going to be in captain america four that's probably one of them oh yeah so yeah let's speculate so there's we got let's say fantastic four or blade are, are yeah, the you got two, one two three four the- five still empty slots Five. So let's yeah, Captain America four. Yeah. How about uh, the Deadpool three? We can go Deadpool three. And then I don't know. I would say, um, do you do an X Men movie? There's a too soon still. Twenty twenty four. I think might be too Fucking soon. Four years away. I think. What's yeah? This is is tough. one of these go- Shang Chi two? Oh, oh, I like that. Shang Chi two. How many? Yeah, between the years. How many years passes between the movies? So in twenty twenty four, Shang Chi two. I think there's got to be an Avengers movie in one of these. Maybe well, yeah. some kind of Avengers oh, team up. Maybe the last date that November twenty twenty four. Perhaps I think Shang Chi two at this point is a lock. Yeah, you have to get. You got a green light of Shang Chi two. And depending how Eternals does, I think maybe an Eternals two. Oh fuck. That's the Eternal sequel. But then again... Another Spider-Man movie? It's too soon. No. You could do... I'm trying to think maybe the series... Because we, did, we didn't think... We didn't know that the series Falcon and Winter Soldier was going to spin into a Captain America 4. Right. Huh. Yeah, maybe X-Men? What, what's the speculation? Are you hearing No, me? I don't know. It's... Uh, Captain America, Deadpool 3. Yeah, the article says huh. Deadpool 3, Captain America 4, and uh, X-Men, possibly. We're, de- we're definitely not... We're definitely... There's, they're going to announce a movie that we're not expecting, yeah. or maybe two. something we've not heard. A yeah. new so, and I also think you need some new characters coming up in here, and maybe yeah. some old ones. So, fuck, we have amazing Marvel content for the next three, four years. Yeah, we're not even, you know, we're not even factoring in, but they're doing a million series. Yeah, how many TV shows in that time we're going to get? Fucking three or four a year. Yeah, I mean, we've gotten four this year already. Yeah, and well, wait, four. Three, five. We're gonna get five in a year. 
We've gotten four or five. You're right. WandaVision, what if it would be the Cap- fourth? Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. Loki. Uh, Loki, what if? what if? And Holy shit. Get Holy shit. Is it too much? It might, it might are be. You, are you... Do you feel it too much, or are you just like I'm? I'm enjoying it as I, oh, as I go. Oh, I am enjoying it. I'm just afraid it's too much for people to feel like they have to follow and watch everything. And I also feel yeah. like some of the the shoehorning of tying into the larger universe, like in Shang Chi, I feel like that's rubbing people the the wrong way. Oh, but here's the thing: Marvel is not in this to make standalone one off movies. They, they'll they'll let the movie take a hit to grow the world and set up four other things, and I'm I'm yeah, kind of torn. I, I on agree. That. I mean, I'm 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 so in the bag that I'm I'm fully in. I'll, I'll admit that. What if I'm not like it's not appointment TV for me, but I do enjoy it. And we'll talk about the what yep, if episode yep. later. I do notice in just talking to people that I don't know if everyone's watching the Marvel, the Disney I don't Plus think shows. They are. Yeah, I don't think go, I don't think it's it's appointment television for a confused. lot of people. I think I think WandaVision was, but I haven't gotten that vibe since that people everyone's watching these other shows. Then again, I don't know what the, I have no pulse on what's going on. I in the mean, world, look, so. so if we're like in the center of like the bubble of loving the stuff, I feel like way on the outside there's fatigue cracks showing. There's a little bit of fatigue from people out there. I think there's people though that probably just don't watch the shows at all, but will still watch the movies. Even though, yeah, they may get confused and they'll get felt. Let's we'll see how they handle that. Yeah, I'm wondering how, uh, like, the show. Well, the the, the Black Widow derived uh, tied directly into Hawkeye, right? I'm wondering how much. It's like when once Doctor Strange comes out, I'm wondering how much you'll have need to have seen WandaVision and Loki to understand what's going on in Doctor Strange. Well, how do you like? Scarlet Witch went through a whole thing and she's in a different place by the end of the show where that's where the movie's yeah, she's gonna start. show up in a different yeah, costume. Yeah, you're gonna be like, what the fuck's going on? What happened to her? She yeah. was so sweet. And then you're gonna be like, oh my god, Loki's back. What I the thought, fuck? Yeah, what happened? I thought he disappeared. What What the fuck's going on? Why are all these Spider-Men in here? What is happening? And then you're just gonna take off your pants. Yeah, and it's just all over. Yeah. Geek mode Look, I bring it on. It may be too much, but God bless him. Keep doing it until it doesn't make any money anymore. Because they're still making money. Uh, here's another way uh, we're making money is by selling merch. Oh. We have, listen, all these movies coming out, listener, you know you want to go to the theater sporting proudly a Jock and Nerd podcast t-shirt or hoodie or any kind of outerwear face mask because you still got to wear the mask in the movie theater. Visit our tea public shop, Jock and Nerd.com. Well, I don't know if you're in Florida or Texas. Oh, well, if you're near those states, you can buy the mask. You can just burn it. Uh, do whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> Jock and Nerd. and burn yes, it. If it's, you know. <laughs> Use our merch to make a political statement. We still get paid. Oh, do. shit. Jockinner.com slash shop. We'll get you there. Lots of fun uh, logos and designs and rug boy on mugs, on T-shirts. Rug boy approved. Get it. What? Yes. Oh, my God. I took out that. Uh, that get the fuck out of here. I'll use that one instead. <laughs> okay. Last thing. Speaking of uh, all the movies coming out we and, and changes, we'd mentioned uh, Sony moved Venom. Let there be carnage up. A week after pushing it back two weeks, they saw the Shang-Chi numbers. They're like, oh, fuck. This is coming out October 1st now. Uh, so very soon. And <laughs> they've been playing around with that yeah, release date. Like, Maybe put it here. And now, yeah, they're like, oh, Shang-Chi is great. Let's like it can make money. I, I, can, I'm surprised they didn't early. go like, we're putting it out now. Everybody go to the theaters. <laughs> they're just like, oh, shit. What oh, have we been shit. waiting for? But some news has been revealed, uh, uh, information about the movie. It may end up being the best thing about the movie, Anthony, is that apparently Venom 2's runtime is going to be a nice, slim 90 minutes. Oh, shit. Wow. That's a quick fucking yeah, movie. Yeah, making it one of the shortest comic book movies in a while. Uh, this, the first movie was uh, longer. 112 is like usually what these the short ones come in at Mm -hmm. uh birds of prey was 108 but 90 minutes do you think this will either help or hurt the movie without seeing the having seen 90 minutes man i don't know what i'm trying to put myself in the fan the shoes of a casual fan i think that i might help i think it might help i think a movie a regular like me i'm when i see a 90 minute movie i'm like oh my god (laughs) Like it better be fucking good. You know, either that or I'm like, did they just edit? Like they just 
they you, just, they just want to get this over. Yeah, with? that's sometimes it feels like that. Yes, but there are movies sometimes where that run two hours because I think two hours is like the everyone feels like it's the standard of like how long a movie yeah, should be. Yeah, but not be. all movies deserve to right. be two hours. And some, yeah, a lot of movies that are two hours feel way too long. So yeah, they could have been ninety minutes. We'll see. I I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in the Venom creating creative team because. <laughs> Although definitely they definitely went for something in that original Venom. It was not my favorite interpretation of it. That's why I think also this is good for the movie. I in fact cut out another twenty minutes. Oh, what shit. the fuck? While I you're did. at it, it's probably gonna help the movie. Uh just show me all the fun Tom Hardy Venom Carnage parts. Eddie. You're a loser, Eddie. <laughs> I can't wait for this though. So October first, Thursday, September thirtieth, the night obviously is coming up. Uh, but 90 minutes quick in and out that's it, it's either gonna be like really good or a uh, lot's missing and you're gonna be very confused we'll mm-hmm. see i still have geek boner geek boner okay let's take a quick break here we'll play some promos and we will come back and talk about what if and zombies right after this after these messages we'll be right back What's up, guys? Gerald from Two Peas on a Podcast here. Are you just sitting there thinking to yourself, man, I really love some dude in his garage sitting around talking about arbitrary countdowns and his favorite things in the world of movies, music, and TV. Well, guess what? That's me. Please look me up. My name is Gerald, and I am from Two Peas on a Podcast. If you want to subscribe to my countdown show, I have a different co-host every week. It's often someone from the world of podcasting or entertainment. And we go through our top five favorite things in whatever that week's category is. You can find links to all of our content, subscribe via your favorite podcast app, and follow us on social media. The easiest thing to do is just head to our website, which is www.2peasonapod.com. I hope you look me up and join the party. It's a lot of fun. See you soon. Be on America. Your organization's terrible. Hey guys, this is Jason Dutch with Dig on America Podcast, and I'm here with Big Hops. Do you have to say your name so weird? (laughs) How do you want me to say? (laughs) And I'm also here with Mikey Famine. The excuse report. Excuse (laughs) report. Do it over. No, it's Stan. No, it's staying the way it is, because this is the way the show is. Big on America here, we explore how American history, policies, and sometimes even our pop culture created the social and political issues facing Americans today. Uh, a little bit about us. I'm your resident brother of the league. <laughs> <laughs> I we love America so much that I demand she be better through constant criticism and protest. Thank you. And uh, in your Obama voice, Mikey. I don't oh, like Obama. Of course you don't. You also don't like bathing and healthy meals. What Dig on America is, is it's a healthy criticism of a country. We, <laughs> America's already perfect. You should know we're perfect just like my hands. Well, I mean, a lot of people might say that, but those people probably haven't gone to school or brushed their teeth today. So um, <laughs> we're going to ignore them. But yeah, check out our show. It's unbeholden to any um, corporate overlords, except for Jay-Z, the Bilderberg yeah. Foundation. George Soros sponsored. George Soros. Soros. The Clinton yeah. Foundation. Absolutely. And uh, let's not forget Emotep. <laughs> <laughs> you can check out our website, digonamerica.com. You can check out all of our audio. We're on every single fucking audio podcast. Podcast app there is uh, out there, yeah, Pandora, yeah. Spotify, etc. Subscribe on YouTube. You can check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash BOA podcast. Hopefully, you'll listen to the show, guys. I won't. Go fuck I'll- yourself. Be on America. And nerd. Listener, if you've been enjoying the show, there's a way you can show your love, your support. Join show our, your love. Show your love. Show me that love. Join our fan club, jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. Jock and Nerd. Where for as little as $3 a month, you get a bonus content, an uh, exclusive RSS feed with extra, extra audio bonus content. The shows come out early. Instant reactions. Uh, and now there are tiers with Discord benefits. You get access to our Discord server where we are holding monthly hangouts just for our Patreon listeners on the Discord. And I got all three of you fuckers there on the last one. You did. That was amazing. 
Oh, shit. I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. I have to change the date of this one, and I'll tell you why. Mm. It's all Sony's fault. Uh, these I like to hold these on the last Thursday of every month. Usually, it's the fourth Thursday of every month. September has five fucking Thursdays. So, the previous date, I told everyone, Thursday, September 30th, is now the evening the Venom 2 sequel comes out. Mm. Lobby job. Sounds like a problem. I don't want that to be a problem because I'm probably going to be at the movie theater on that Thursday watching the fucking movie. So we're going to move it up to the actual fourth Thursday of the month, which is Thursday, September 23rd. So if you're listening to this in real time, it's not this week. It is the following week. Uh, 8 p.m. Central. We'll all be hanging out. Are you free that day, Anthony? What date is that again? Thursday, September 23rd. <laughs> yep. Fuck. Well, you said the 30th your- and then yeah, I'm 20, turning it in right now. 23rd. Put it in your fucking calendar. All right, I'll put it in. I don't know if I'm... I right. should be okay. 23rd? Yeah, I should be fine. Two in a row with the jock is going to be amazing. Okay, so anyways, yes, there's a bunch of things you can pick a what movie. What time do we do those? 8 p.m. Central. Okay, I'll be fine. 8 p.m.-ish, we'll all hang out. It'll be lots of fun. Join the fan club for other benefits. You can pick a movie and make us review it. It could be anything. Lots of fun stuff on the Patreon, jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. All right, this week's review, we are up to episode five. Of the first season of What If? This episode titled What If Zombies? Mm, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Here's your spoiler alert. Strap yourselves in, you fucks. Spoiler time. Uh, and this one has a voice cast as featured in, well, kind of in Infinity War, where the episode is set, but everyone, everyone's returning. Mark Ruffalo, Paul Bettany, Chadwick Boseman, and I think this is his last one. No, uh, I think there's one more. Oh, there's one more. Well, he has a line in this one that always made me fucking choke up and start crying. Sebastian Stan, Bucky Barnes, Evangeline Lilly as Hope Van Dyne, Paul Rudd, uh, Scott Lang, John Favreau, Happy Hogan, Denai Guerrera as Okoye, Emily Van Camp, Sharon Carter, my vitiligo brother from another mother, David Desmalchian, Geek Boner, as Kurt from the Ant-Man movies. You remember Kurt, right? I, I do. Yeah. I, I remember Remember everybody. And uh, not there is uh, your Tom Holland. We have a dude named Hudson Thames voicing Peter Parker. And we hear Josh Keaton again as oh, Steve that's not Rogers. Tom Holland? That is not Tom Holland. Did you think it was? He did a good job. He does a really good impression of Tom he Holland. He did. He did. Josh Keaton, the Steve Rogers guy, also very good at the Steve Rogers voice. So, yeah, only one not here, Tom Holland. You got Hudson Thames. Anthony, what's the basic setup of this one? Oh, so... Basic setup. Let me just think. Let me think. Let me think. Where does it start? That's the only thing I'm trying to it figure out. It starts right at the beginning of Infinity War. Remember? Right, right. Okay. Yeah. It starts at Infinity War. And basically, if you remember at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp, the, um, whatchamacallit, Hank, not Hank, sorry. Uh, Scott Lang is the only, is stuck in the quantum realm. Yeah. I believe he brings back. Do they, is that no, how it starts? This, like bring- no, no, this is, so it starts as like Infinity War and then you see uh, Am, uh, the moment where, ha- it is Hank who goes to get his wife. Oh, right, right, right. So yeah, it's, okay, let me, let me, let me restart. Reset Sorry. This. Reset. <laughs> so it starts off with Infinity War where uh, Bruce Banner gets, you know, his ass kicked by Thanos and he gets sent to Doctor Strange's uh, Sanctum Sanctorum. But when he gets sent there, no one's there. What? And he goes out, and what? Ebony Maw and Call uh, Obsidian. Call Obsidian. The yeah, Black Order. There, just like in Infinity War, they're yeah. about to take over. They're asking for the fucking uh, Infinity Stone, and the Avengers show up. But when they show up, we realize that these Avengers are not the Avengers anymore. They're zombie Avengers. They're zombies. And we realize through what I was talking about earlier, although I had all fucked up, <laughs> that. Hank Pym, when he was looking, going to the quantum realm to discover um, and find uh, his wife, wife Janet, she was infected by something in the quantum realm. A that quantum virus, zombies. yeah. And now the whole universe are is zombified, and there is a ragtag team of heroes, Avengers, and other side characters that are still around trying to save people and figure out the cure. Yeah, we may not have seen the last of some of these the way it ends up. This is loosely inspired based on uh, the comics as well as Infinity War, the movie. Uh, Marvel Zombies was a five-issue limited series 
in, back in 2005, 2006, written by one Robert Kirkman. You may have heard of him. Mm-hmm. And art by Sean Phillips. And uh, at, at that time, uh, 2005, uh, he would have been a few years into doing The Walking Dead, which started in 2003 at Image. So uh, they, he, they do pull some things right from the Marvel Zombies first. They went on to do like five limited series. There was like Marvel Zombies one through five, five separate series for the many years. Overall thoughts. What did you think of this episode? Anthony? Uh, I liked it. I uh, I'm I'm liking these, you know, ever since the first one, which I, I mentioned I was disappointed in. Ever since, these have all been fun. And this one is Marvel's take on zombies and, and a Walking Dead type yeah. thing. Yeah. And I thought it was fun. I liked I liked how the, the horror kind of vibes to it. I liked the ragtag mix of people that you really didn't think would ever, you haven't really seen interact that right, much. Right, hang out together. That's great, yeah. Yeah, and then you also had a lot of, like, um sacrifice and strong moments and yeah i thought it was uh another wild crazy episode yet also pretty fun yeah i i enjoyed it too i thought it was a lot of fun and nuts and surprisingly graphic yeah uh for um a disney thing but good for them letting i mean there's some fucking crazy shots of just disintegrating skeletons and bodies and shit decapitations wong gets decapitated right in the beginning yeah. Uh, it's fantastic. So, okay, let's break it down. Like you said, it opens just like Infinity War, and they pop out, and they and they and and you find out that they're zombies, and they turn Call Obsidian and uh, Ebony Ma. And there's the first thing, first different thing about these zombies: they can all still use their powers. Oh shit! This is uh, going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a cool. Like they're not completely. I mean, they're 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 not smart, but they're not completely zombified either they yeah. still kind of have awareness of of the fact that they're powerful they can still climb things and open doors and do well, things and that, not only that but like they they're still kind of aware that they're superheroes yeah and they don't still know how to use their fucking powers and whatever they have in the comics apparently i haven't read it i should read it i heard it's good i have not either but um i wonder if rugs have read it uh He's but read everything. basically in the the virus they get doesn't really turn them into zombies it just gives them like a a taste for flesh a hunger, mm. an extreme hunger. So they have all their mental capacities. They're like talking, but they're just like all cracked out because they need to eat flesh and shit. Then we find out who has survived as Bruce is uh, about to get taken and he's saved by Spider-Man and uh, Doctor Strange Cloak and Wasp saved Bruce the last minute as the ants eat the zombies, which is that was a fucking that was disturbing also. Yeah, the, the port of ants eating a zombie. Yeah, that was great. I was like, this is fucking graphic. And then, like you said, the watcher tells us two weeks earlier, Hank Pym went to get his wife and he fucked up and he brought back and infected Janet Van Dyne and infected the world. Uh, And you see like a nightmare version of the scene from Ant-Man 2 where, Mm -hmm. you know, she's happy to see her mom and instead they just get eaten. But uh, I love the the little detail that he mentions where the unfortunately the Avengers heroism just made it worse. Because once they were turned, nothing could stop the zombies. Right, it's right, great. Right. It's great. You recapping this because with well, the problem with with doing these reviews, and I probably should watch these twice. You don't remember fucking a week ago. It's dude. tough to yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's tough to remember what happened because I watched it ex- about five days ago. Well, remember this part. This was great. Peter Parker makes like a fun orientation video. Kind of oh, yeah, remember, yeah, yeah. kind of like zombie land. How to survive land. a zombie apocalypse? Yeah, it's yeah. very zombie land. And the best part is Happy Hogan is wearing a shirt in the video. I'm not single. I'm saving myself for Thor. Is what the <laughs> T-shirt said. I was like, that's fucking hilarious. But here you meet some more of the team. You meet Happy and Kurt uh, wearing his ex-con jacket, and then Kurt, David Dismalchin. David yeah. Dismalchin. Uh, Winter Soldier's there. Bucky's there, naked in the shower. Oh, yeah. And then Sharon Carter is there. And then Okoye shows up and she's looking for T'Challa, who went missing. Mm -hmm. And apparently there is a cure they find out at Camp Lehigh, which is a location you may remember. It's being where uh, Steve Rogers was trained. It's the first base shield had. It's in New Jersey. And then Happy just has this hilarious line where Favreau's like, just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, you got to go to Jersey. Oh, shit. I was like, that's pretty, that's good. It's true. A fun little New York fact, or maybe something they got wrong. Yeah. 
that subway, I think they tra- they they take. Oh, it's, if I'm it's not mistaken. From Grand Central Station doesn't actually does, go. Doesn't actually go to that <laughs> to, to New that Jersey. You would need right. to take the path train to get over to Hoboken, and then you got to take another train. Yeah, there's no train from Grand Central Station. But Grand Central is where they filmed, or where they did the Avengers stuff, where the the big Leviathan goes through. So that's where the next scene happens. They're in Grand Central Station, and then we see more zombie heroes attacking them. Well, they them. split up, and Peter's like, oh, basically this, like, this is great. Haven't you seen? We shouldn't do that. So, okay, basically. yeah, they want to split up, and he's like, he tells, he asks Okoye, don't they have zombie movies in Wakanda or horror movies? And she's like, we don't need horror movies. We have American reality TV. I was like, <laughs> oh, zing, burn. Uh, that was great. So you see zombie Falcon and Hawkeye show up, and I love Happy Hogan going, blam, blam. Every time he shoots at them. And Sharon's like, are you saying blam? He goes, yes. <laughs> so they're trying to jumpstart the subway train. And I love how, you know, Peter is pulling this train. Very reminiscent of, like, Spider-Man 2, the other way around. You know, instead of trying to stop a train, he's trying to pull this train loose. Mm. And then more people die. Happy dies. And she's got to blast him in the face with his own Iron Man glove. The great deaths. Okoye fucking slices Falcon in half like she's Michonne on The Walking Dead, which she is right in front of Bucky. Right. And then she goes, she's like, yeah, like, aren't you supposed to be sad about that? <laughs> she goes, that was your friend. Sorry about that. And he goes, I should be sad, but I'm not. <laughs> and so at that point they were still like kind of bickering with each other currently, weren't they? I don't know. Were they yeah, friends? They were still kind of, I mean, this is before. Yeah, they're still kind of bickering. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, the, the the tone of it was very dark comedy. Yeah, yes, and I I kind of love that. Lots of Easter eggs. You got Peter wearing Doctor Strange's cloak, which is fun. So on the train, Zombie Cap finds them, and then uh, this is another great nod to stuff as Bucky has to fight him with the shield and then slices him in half with his own shield, and then goes, "Sorry, pal. Guess this is the end of the line." Which is mm-hmm. the line they always say to each other. I'll be here till the end of the line. Right. There you go. This is so good. And then yeah, Wasp goes in Sharon and she explodes. And she's like, uh, guys, I'm covered in Sharon. <laughs> so good. <laughs> well, Sharon, Sharon dies here, right? Yeah. She, that, yeah. yeah, yeah. She, Cap, zombie Cap gets Sharon, turns her. Mm-hmm. Wasp kills Sharon. And then you find out she is scratched. And this is your this this episode Full of all the best zombie tropes, right? It's oh, yeah, great. That, that's your classic zombie trope. Slow where one of the infection, heroes, yep, they're going to turn. Slowly going to turn, yep, and you liked her. They're going to sacrifice something at the last minute. And in this scene, when he's talking to Hope, there is something important where she's like, how can you always be so smiley and happy? And he goes, you know, Aunt May, everybody, I've suffered so much loss. And he mentions for the first time in the MCU, Uncle Ben. Oh, shit. For the first time actually mentioned in the What If cartoon. What do you think about that? I caught that and I was going, oh, my gosh, that this I, they haven't mentioned Uncle right? Ben ever. We just saw in his the initials. MCU up until. Yeah, just it was a kind of either implied or who knows if he actually existed. Right. Like it wasn't it's never been overt. But yeah, this is the first time we we actually get confirmation that Uncle Ben existed in, in this universe. universe in yeah. some other alternate universe. It's not. Is it still the main MCU? Who knows? I I think it's. I think the offshoot of this episode's universe is that uh, Hank went to or uh, that Janet uh, Van Dyne got infected with the virus. That, oh, that's like the, that's the the Nexus event or whatever the change. Right. Yeah. But yeah. then again, also um, Hank going back and seeing her. I don't know if that happened in the movie. He, I think he. No, that's a good point. He was looking for her. He couldn't find her. Oh, he does go back. Did he find her in the movie? He I found her in Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah, yeah, in the second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah he does. Find okay, her. so the Nexus event is she gets infected with the virus. Yeah, yeah. That so if that's the case, everything. then Peter. This means that Peter also has. Oh right, Uncle okay, ben okay. In, in I, got you. I got you. I got you. Get yeah. We're loved, gonna get really yeah. nerdy about this. I loved hearing Uncle Ben uh, for the first time. So they're almost to the camp. The train runs out of fuel, and Kurt is like, "We gotta walk through that." And you got your zombie horde. Uh, gotta get through a zombie horde scene in the zombie movie. And since Hope is like, this is my fault. It kind of is, I guess. She brought. She also helped bring them back. She brought back the virus, but yeah. she didn't know. She didn't know. She thought she, she was getting her mom. Yeah, she thought she was getting her mom. So an amazingly poignant, beautiful scene. And like I love how it, there's no sound and it's just quiet. And as Hope goes giant size and carries the team over the horde, just squashing and kicking zombies <laughs> as she goes. 
and she gets in there safely. But you notice the zombies are starting to crawl. They're starting to swarm on her. And she goes, Peter, keep smiling for me, okay? And then giant Hope Van Dyne just falls back, succumbing. Well, throughout the, the entire virus. episode, Peter's like this last beacon of hope. Yeah, like, yeah. Things keep getting worse and worse, and he's still like, let's push on, let's keep going type thing. Well, that's what he says. He goes, Aunt May says you have to have hope. And he's like, it's your name, even. You got to have hope. That's all you can do. <laughs> oh, Peter. So now all that's left is Peter, Okoye, Bruce, Bucky, Kurt, and the cloak. And they notice... The zombies are just standing around this base. They're not moving. They're not advancing. Mm-hmm. The fuck is going on? And I love Kurt goes, oh, the Baba Yaga is near. And I was like, <laughs> oh, shit, where is Wanda? This is going to be, it's oh, gonna be so an issue. Oh, you picked it up already? Yeah, because he called oh, Baba Yaga know. the witch. Uh, right away, I was like, oh, Scarlet Witch. So Vision pops out of nowhere, and uh, he is there, and he's not a zombie because he's an android. And he's hanging out in Armin Zola's little computer room, looks like, from when we saw in the Captain America movie. And turns out the Mind Stone's emitting this frequency, holding all the zombies back. Great. He's figured out how to bring people back. And what has he brought back? He's brought back Scott Lang's head in a jar. Like it's an episode <laughs> of Futurama. That was hilarious. I thought of it. I, but the first reference I thought of was when uh, in Alien, when they bring back the uh, the android's head. Oh, just, right. The android's head is just sitting there on the table. It's just the head. That's right. Yeah. Now, that's a clear nod to Futurama because all the heads okay. are in jars and he's full of puns. It's, so, it's almost annoying, <laughs> the amount of puns. He's like, I know, I lost weight. I look different. I'm like, oh, my God. Well, you, you had to imagine they cast Paul Rudd. Oh, you must have had a they blast. They didn't cast Paul Rudd yeah. to just, like, get eaten by a zombie in the first minute. <laughs> they they must have had – so, yes. I was like, they got Paul Rudd to be in there and he dies, but he must have had so much fun. And he kind of is like – he's the only he survives this whole thing. Uh, so Vision can theoretically cure everyone. He doesn't have the tech. And Okoye is like, oh, we have the tech in Wakanda. We'll just go there. Let's find a jet, right? Mm. Bucky is walking around, and Vision is like, uh, can you not walk yeah, around like and look at stuff? He's basically you're not going to like what <laughs> you're going to You're not going to like. I, I would really rather you didn't. And what Bucky finds is a zombie Scarlet Witch contained and fucking T'Challa on a table with limbs missing. I think just his leg, right? Oh, shit. Uh, his arm and his, one leg and one arm is missing. Oh, both the leg and an arm. Yeah, okay. and that's horrifying. And it's even more horrifying when you find out what the fuck's been going on is that Vision has been luring. And he's still alive. He's still alive. He's keeping him alive to feed him as snacks to Wanda because Vision has been luring people there this whole time to feed zombie Wanda. And this is kind of heartbreaking. He justifies this by saying, Her powers are too strong for the cure. It wasn't going to work on her. The only course of action I thought was logical was to contain her and feed her. And they're like, why don't you just kill her? And he's like, I can't do that. I can't. I I feel bad. I feel bad about what I did, but I can't kill her, which is that. that, It's a tough situation, I guess. That's another classic trope, too, where you like you find. Oh, yeah. You in zombie or like horror movies, you find someone that's like stowed away. That like is like a beacon of hope, like oh, like this is where the cure is. But then you, like that person's also very. And then dark zombie and pets is also a thing. Kirkman mm-hmm. wrote that a lot in The Walking Dead, having you know people have like Michonne. The governor, the governor had a zombie pet. Remember Michonne, and initially had her like father and brother on chains walking through. Oh yeah, walking around with no arms. Yeah, that, and no jaw. <laughs> like she took their jaw and arms off. <laughs> so that was fucking crazy. That's when the show was good. Uh, yeah, those were the good times. So Vision's like, okay, I fucked up. He blows a hole out the building. He's like, let's get the fuck out of here. Wanda grabs a Koye. I think she dies. Vision drops the building on her. Doesn't stop her. And then Vision feels so bad. He just rips the fucking Mind Stone right out of his head. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. And he goes gray and dies just like in, in, in Infinity War. And, and now they have the he wants to give them the Mind Stone so they can get the cure. Because why? I don't understand why he did that. He can't not be with Wanda, and he's just going to sacrifice himself. I think he, the way I interpret it is, yeah, he wants to be with Wanda. If he can't live with Wanda, he's not going to be live. And he's also just realized he's just done a lot of really shit. Yeah, he he's, felt really he's bad. Wanda, yeah. He's keeping human, humans alive and feeding them to Wanda. Yeah, so Bucky stops and tries to buy them time, and he gets thrown in the distance. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's. We'll see him again. But they do the bit and in, from uh, Infinity War and Endgame where Bruce can't Hulk out. They do that really well where he's like, mm-hmm. no. 
Except at the end, he finally fucking hulks out when he needs to and uh, takes takes on Wanda and the zombies as Peter, Scott's head, wearing the cloak, and T'Challa are flying off towards Wakanda in a quad jet. And we don't... Quinjet. Quinjet. Oh, I thought it, he, they said it was a quad jet, which is oh, okay. predecessor to the Quin. It's a little bit smaller. But we don't find out what happens to Hulk. What do you think happened to Hulk? He he. We see him... They go. He's going right at Wanda, and they they clash, and then you don't see anything else. Hmm. Is Bruce still alive? I don't know. I I did catch though, like he was unable to turn into the Hulk, like Infinity War, but the Hulk still protects him when he's about oh, to. Oh yeah, get he's bit. about to bite he, him. Like a little yeah. green part of his forearm. And he's like, thanks, big, thanks for the save, big guy. Yeah, that was kind of cool. And then, but then finally, I was so happy to see him Hulk out. I well, I don't know if he survived, and then. They're on their way to Wakanda. They think they're in the clear. Don't forget, there's a fucking giant Hope Van Dyne zombie now just standing out there. Oh, yeah. You got to fly around that thing. She grabs the ship and holds on to it for a second, but uh, they get away. And it's so funny because she just then throws a zombie at it. Did you catch that? <laughs> like, way. It's like a long <laughs> toss. And he actually hits the thing. goes, ah! And falls off. <laughs> so heading to Wakanda, they're having a little heart-to-heart, com- meaningful conversation they're like chalk one up for the avengers this is a win they think they're in the clear and then chadwick boseman as t'challa has this line he goes in my culture death is not the end it's just the beginning i was like oh god oh no they had to give him that line everything's gonna be great they're gonna get to wakanda they got the mind stone they can fix everything except the episode ends on this crazy cliffhanger you see an encased gated wakanda everybody is fucking turned in there and Thanos is standing there, zombie Thanos, with the Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, that was at Wakanda? That was at Wakanda. He is waiting for them because if you notice, he has the Infinity Gauntlet. He ha- he is just missing one stone, the Mind Stone, that they are now bringing to him. How did he know to go to Wakanda? I don't know. That is a good question. Oh, shit. I, I guess, well, well, yeah. That might be a little bit of a plot hole. It doesn't make sense. He yeah, because in the movie, he... He goes to Wakanda because Vision is there. Right. And he has the Mind Stone in his head and he senses it. Right. Well, he, know, yeah, he knows where it is. I mean, because Vision is there and the generals have reported that Vision was there. But so, how did he know to go to Wakanda if Vision's not there? And how did he get the other stones? Like the zombie Doctor Strange would have had the Time Stone. He would still have to get that fucking thing. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. It, it is, is a cool, but it, it is a cool end. It's a great cliffhanger because you're like, <laughs> oh, fuck, what's going to happen? So I feel like there may be maybe next season, this season. A second episode of this Marvel Zombies? Well, and this is all building to something, right? Like at the end of this episode, like the the time, what is it? The Avengers? The, the Guardians of the Multiverse. Right, right, So right. I think in this episode, the person who joins them is Bucky. Because similar to oh, yeah, how yeah. we didn't see Natasha get killed. She got pulled off screen. We don't see him die. I believe they're both showing up in the Guardians of the Multiverse. My question was, where the fuck was Thor and the Guardians of the Galaxy and, and all this? Are they still out there? Can they help? Are they zombies? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Hey, you know what? Too much too much to pay the voice actors. Oh, yeah. They can't, can't afford uh, all of those fuckers. No, not all of them. But, uh, yeah, you'd have to pay all of them. Be a lot be a lot to match. Anyways, fun episode. I thought it was great. Uh, next week, or if you're listening to this, the episode that's out now, the next episode, is the what if uh, Killmonger saved tony stark so that should be cool so michael b jordan and probably not robert Downey jr no i don't think they got no you can't afford him you can't pay him like 10 million dollars to say one word (laughs) they just have to copy and paste it over and over again hope it works (laughs) pick the word well that one i'm really looking forward to because like that one's interesting it's such a a weird mix like killmonger and iron man what if he ended up in Wakanda as like uh, you know uh, 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 in, on a rebellion side of this thing? Fuck, that'd be crazy. What's What's good so far about what if is they're able to tell stories in a way that I don't think they like. They could probably never do a zombie movie, right? At least at this, they couldn't do one up until this point, but they can do one for a thirty-minute episode. Yeah, and a lot of you these know. kind of work well that way. And uh, no, I kind of like that they squished like they did a movie and then they squished the comics with a, a, a mcu movie mm-hmm. that's a fun idea and i think they pulled it off so i'm dying to see what happens at the end i want to know more about the remaining and, and it was a lot survivors. of characters other than spider-man that really haven't gotten yeah a ton of do yeah in the marvel universe kurt. you know this is the most i've kurt. seen kurt do it's great he was yeah, great you got kurt you got okoye you got you know hope van dyne bucky like it's a lot of like 
side characters, sidekick characters. Good shit. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know if this is like my favorite so far, but they are. They've been getting better. My favorite's still the Black Panther one, but uh, Black Panther one's good. The Doctor Strange one I really Doctor like. Strange this one one's is up really there. Good. It's all kind of tied. Yeah, they're all pretty good. Yeah, except that first one. Except that first one. And then what was the other one? What's the other one we're missing? The Avengers. Oh, uh, what if they got killed by hate? That one was all okay. That was okay. That was yeah. okay. I did, the tone yeah. of that, I liked it. Yeah, I, I thought the tone was very like, um. Fincher kind of yes it was like a seven serial killer but I just didn't like the 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 ending and the fact that it was Hank Pym all uh, fucking yeah. yeah that was kind of clunky anyways we got a few more we'll see what happens all right let's do some quick news from the nation it's hot for news from the nation it's time for news from the nation <laughs> flush <laughs> It stinks. It stinks. It stinks. Ooh, bubbly. Uh, yeah, I just there's have, a lot coming out there. I can't. It's, one those, it's one of those where you ate hot food the night before. Yes. And, and it's been festering. Yeah. Yeah, you wake up and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to shit my fucking pants in this bed. There is a chemical reaction happening in yeah. my colon right now. Yeah. It's like when you mix baking soda and like vinegar. Yes, you just or, put, yeah. <laughs> or Mentos and Diet Coke. Has that, <laughs> that ever happened? It's shooting out of my asshole. Oh, shit. <laughs> Anyways, has anybody done that out of the asshole Diet Coke and Mentos? Oh, oh God. Is that in the new Jackass movie? It should be. Uh, anyways, I got one comment here I wanted to share from a listener who follows us on Twitter. Listener Dirk at Dirk BR over Tron. A uh, longtime listener. He always comments and I always have fun conversations with him over on the Twitter at Jock and Nerdcast. This is regarding uh, our Shang-Chi review, Anthony, and how we talked about how the the stunts, the martial arts remind us a lot of Jackie Chan movies. And you mm-hmm. said what? I said the stuntman or the, the fight choreographer, I think, was involved with Jackie Chan at some point. You were correct. So Dirk says... Brad Allen is an Australian stuntman. The film was dedicated to him. Look him up. It's a fascinating story. It is a fascinating story. Uh, he is at the end. It's, the movie is in tribute to Brad Allen, and I will tell you why in a little bit. But first, let me tell you who Brad Allen is. Uh, for, according to Jackie Chan, Brad Allen was uh, a fan, a huge fan. He became a stuntman and joined... Uh, the Jackie Chan stunt team. He visited, he was filming Mr. Nice Guy Jackie Chan, and mm-hmm. Brad Allen just visited him on the set as a fan. He was crazy. Jackie says he was crazy about Chinese kung fu, practiced it for many years. So, he also fought him in the movie Gorgeous. There's a boxer. Have you? I've not seen Gorgeous. There's a I've clip, though. Either. So, there's a clip where Jackie Chan is fighting a boxer. This is Brad Allen. Brad Allen goes on. To work on all the Kingsman movies as stunt director, Wonder Woman, uh, and a lot of other movies. And he did work on Shang-Chi as well as Shanghai Noon, Rush Hour 2, Solo, A Star Wars Story. Here is why the movie is attributed to him. The sad part of this story, Brad Allen passed away a little over a month ago. Wow. August 7th, 2021. And it says due to a mysterious illness. Passed away from an illness. Not mysterious. Just oh, an, a mysterious no, illness. No, just what the illness. Hell? It says it was just an illness. And he was he was 48. He was the same age my dad was when he passed away. It's crazy. Holy shit. 48. This guy, and it was, it, this guy was an amazing uh, stuntman. Did, uh, you know, you see his work everywhere. It's really kind of sad, but he should be remembered and honored, and I'm glad they put a thing in there. So that's why. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, his, his the Jackie Chan style influence, as mentioned on the review i mean it definitely shows in a lot of those fight scenes and he did a great job i mean first off i'm sorry to hear that he had passed yeah um thinking about the future hopefully the whoever is doing fight choreography for any of shang chi's uh fights whether they be in crossover movies or in his own films lives up to what he did for that movie because the fight scenes are one of some of the best things about yeah. that movie he gave us some of the best hand-to-hand combat in a marvel movie man this guy worked on a lot uh scott pilgrim uh versus the world uh all the i said kingsman insidious sinister hellboy 2 rush hour 3 aragon wey. a new kingsman movie that's coming out yeah, we watched that trailer on the last Discord he hangout. That too. But yeah, he did that one. The King's Man, the origin of uh, the that little uh, organization. 
It looks, it doesn't look bad, actually, that King's Man. I was like, oh. Well, you hated the first one. Uh, you know what? I was just, this, this thing's, <laughs> again, the church scene is fantastic. That was that was when you were taking your stand. You're like, I, I don't like everything. I hate this movie. I love the stunt work in the movie. Brad Allen did a fantastic <laughs> job. But look, if they're they're fighting Rasputin, this is a Russian motherfucker that nobody could kill. They killed him like five times. He couldn't die. That's pretty interesting. I'll see that. <laughs> Anyways, Dirk, thank you so much for uh, highlighting Brad Allen and his work. And it is sad that uh, it is sad that he it's sad he passed. But he left us with amazing, amazing stunts, amazing work. Okay. Let's finish up with what are we watching, Anthony? Are we watching anything? I've been watching a lot of polygots on YouTube. Polygots. I've, Explain to the listener what is a polygot. I believe a polygot is someone that can speak multiple languages. Okay. Do you have to, is there like a number of languages you have to be to be a polygot? Uh, I don't really know. It's a good Let question. Me, Anyways, that's, that's a good question. Either here or there. Yeah. The guy I'd been watching in the past who actually died, unfortunately, like this year as oh, well, and I oh. mentioned him before, uh, was Lao Shu 5505. Zero zero, yeah, five oh five. I believe that's how that's his handle, and he's really cool. And then lately, I've been watching um, Shoma NYC, uh-huh. who he does a bunch of different vi- videos. He doesn't always do language stuff, but um, he's a white guy in in New York uh, that is does a lot of language videos along with other stuff, and uh, very fluent in Chinese or Mandarin. And uh, it's very interesting seeing people's reaction to this, like chubby white guy that all of a sudden just starts speaking Mandarin to people in New York City. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's... And some of the other videos he's done that are... The ones that I like that are language, he's done like Punjabi, he's wow. done Wolof. He's I bet done the reactions Navajo. are amazing. Yeah, it's just very interesting watching someone that can speak multiple languages. Is like it that. polygot or polyglot? They're both words. Polygot. Polyglot means is an adjective knowing or using several languages. No, hmm. but they're both... It's both polygot and polyglot. Stupid English. English sucks. <laughs> Why do you do that? How are you supposed to learn a thing when it's two languages, two things? Love that English has just become the the de facto world language. As it should be. No, what? <laughs> Who said that? Learn Chinese, people. It's gonna come in handy. Uh okay, so yeah, you'd recommend if you're into languages? Yeah, if you're into languages, yeah. I just I've just gone down the rabbit hole of YouTubers and those are the latest one is Shoma NYC. It's X I A O M A N Y C. Oh, yeah, that's how you say that show. Show, show X I O. Uh, okay, well, I continued and I finished my assignment of the Gamera 90s oh. trilogy. I watched Gamera 3 Revenge of Iris. Geek Mode. What did you think of this one? Edis, if you want to say it right. Edis. Uh, 1999. Yeah. I, you know what? I really like this one. Uh, just especially because this is a fantastic trilogy overall. Oh yeah, this the the movies build on each other. That this one ties back to the first one heavily, uh, and I loved uh some of the themes and the the whole story. The and then then, then there's some CGI. You notice they're using there's a lot CGI. more CGI. It's not as but CGI isn't too bad though for its time. No, Especially it's in pretty Japan. good. Yeah, this yeah. is the same year the Matrix came out. This fucking movie came out. Yeah, this it's... movie looks pretty good. So uh, in this one, yeah, the Gaios sort of the Gaios are returning. So you have the girl who's connected to Gamera, right? She's all grown up, but now there is another child connected to the Gaios creature uh, because, and this is great because in the first movie, what we didn't see is her parents and her cat Iris were just killed by camera when he smashed Residual through. Residual damage. Yes. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of like Batman versus Superman where Bruce is running into the building yep. or like the uh-huh. other, you know, the other side of things. So she, this girl hates Gamera. Hates her. She hates him. hates him. And there's this little pod that's there and it grows. And I didn't, it, some of the Risuk Cho, I believe was the name of the temple or the thing in the temple that they, it was a little confusing. Mm-hmm. But this thing comes out and it looks like a Gaios, but not really. It's got more tentacles. She names it Iris after her cat. Mm-hmm. And she's connected to this thing and it fucking absorbs her. And this thing gets big and it's huge. It's a more it's a parasitic relationship rather than Gamera's relationship with the with the girl. Keep in mind though, Gamera, by the end of the last movie. He would lost his connection to humanity. They talked about the mana, and they explained the mana and the energy, and they even mentioned how he has severed his connection to humanity. That's when the little things broke. The little medallions all yep. cracked is when he severed the thing. Hence why when he's fighting the Gaios in 
whatever city that is, I forget. Oh my god, the destruction he's just, in that he first scene. Yeah, he doesn't care about the destruction of people. He's Holy he's just shit. all he cares about is eliminating the Gaios. Holy shit. That was that opening scene fantastic where a giant Gaios on fire just drops out of the sky, big boom. And then to make things worse, Gamma just shows up and just starts fucking st- smashing people, blowing people. You see people like the destruction and the violence in this definitely went up a notch. You see people flying through the fucking air and fireballs. Oh yeah, and the, the, the one part where the Gaios is like his eye is falling out. And oh yeah, his stuck. eye is hanging off of the socket. And he did, Gamma just blows him to pieces. Did you? Did you? Uh, first off, th- you notice in the beginning of the movie there's uh, there's dead Gamma at the bottom of the of the ocean. What was that about? So there's been many Gamma's, oh, and he's the last Gamma to protect one. the world. Oh uh, shit! Because the Atlanteans had created, I bl- I'm. F- this is based off memory. They had created Gaios to protect themselves, and the Gaios turned against them. Right, so they and had to they create, create a Gamera. Gamera. Isn't that always the case? Just like the Celestials, right, the Deviants, right, and right. the Eternals. But did you know? Did you like um, Gamera's design in this one? He's a much more menacing looking. Yeah, he looks scarier, and uh, he's flying a lot. There's a whole air battle that was also yeah. thrilling that they're in the air. But the yeah, the death and the wanton destruction was fucking unbelievable. Again, miniatures on point, amazing miniatures. And I just the fact that they spent hours making these things just to fucking blow them up in <laughs> slow motion is that's kind of a fun job. Much I more can, of a horror vibe in the movie too, right? Like a dark cultish horror vibe because you've got those people that like worship Iris. Oh right, right, yeah, yeah. And they're trying to protect. And then it. Iris is like killing people, like killing everyone's like he kills the girl's family without her knowing and he's sucking I, the souls of people yeah he's oh yeah he's a soul sucker yeah. uh, with its tentacles what yeah, did that's you think funny. of the final battle the fun okay so the final battle is insane it's pretty insane uh it's pretty crazy as Gamera's hand is uh pinned to a wall he just cuts his hand off yep. and then uh, Iris shoots a flame and then he uses the flame and makes a hand with it. Is that what happened? And then shoots it back. Yeah. So I'll, I'll explain what happened there. Because I was like, what the fuck is happening here? He well, first off, Iris absorbs the girl. Right. Fully. Oh, yeah. And then he grabs he, he her, grabs out, her, of her out of Iris's out of stomach. Heart. So he yes. pulls her out. Yeah. And then Iris is sucking the, the energy out of his hand to create fireballs. So you see the two tentacles starting to form fireballs. He's going to shoot him at Gamera, but Gamera sees this, blows his own hand off. Yeah. And then as Iris is shooting the fireballs, he takes his stump and absorbs the fire into <laughs> yes. his stump. And his fire it becomes a hand, a, hand, a fire hand, hand. And then he shoves awesome. it into the hole that he, oh, he put that's the original how he grabs hand. It. Yeah. yeah. But he put the, he shoves it into the hole that he put, he caused with his other hand to take oh, the girl to out. Blow him up. Yeah. Yes. So and, and that that was that was fantastic, and then that it ends fantastic. really cryptically too because there's a, a because, um they, I guess the Gaios kind of realize that Gamera's weakened. There's a swarm of Gaios coming. Oh yeah, what what happened to that? They were approaching the city, and then the movie just ends. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? What it, about yeah, the there's Gaios? There's a swarm of Gaios coming, and and even though he's got one hand and he's like really fucking beat up, he's walking towards the Gaios about oh, to take all right. of them on. He's oh, it's that is that a, there's no Gamera four, is there? There is no Gamera four. This there is, is another Gamera movie that came out, but it has nothing to do with these. I know there's more in the two thousands, right? It continues, but there's it's one more that comes out, but yeah, it's not has anything to do with solid this. trilogy though. I just loved how like they set the shit up in the first one, and uh, you know everything tracks, uh, everything makes sense. You remember things from the other movie, mm-hmm. uh, and Gamera, you know, comes back to become the protector. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, it was great. It's great. I it's, love the it's considered the these three movies are considered like well obviously there's only one trilogy but this is considered like the gold standard for kaiju films in Japan. I and I can see why and they look so good even though you know that it was the late nineties they made really well yeah and they and they as you mentioned they build on each other so you see the first one then you see you know him becoming more of a protector in the second one and because of what he did to protect. He has to sever his stuff with humanity. So in the third one, you know, it's kind of unclear because he he's not he doesn't really care about humans. That you know, humans are like trying to fight him, but then they realize by the end he's still the protector of Earth. They, they, need, they him. need him. Yeah, and that that but, ending is just amazing with with the Gaios coming and he's just like, I'm gonna um, make it. He's, he's just struggling. Gonna take it. He's just gonna try to take them all on. Like he's probably gonna lose. <laughs> 
And I love, it's hilarious, every movie where the humans clearly are watching Gamera chase away a bad guy from them. And they're all like, ah, fire on Gamera. Fire <laughs> Gamera first. Get him down. I'm like, do you guys still don't get it? You motherfuckers. Three movies, and he's still shooting at Gamera first. He's clearly trying to help. What was your favorite of the three? Or if you want to rank Oof, the three. Ah, dude, I don't know. I, the, the, I like two and three a lot. Two and three are probably really good. It's The one is really good. It's hard because of how they build on each other, you know, and mm -hmm. Just by three, the payoff and and all the the tie-ins are are amazing. But Legion was good too. The giant Legion creature. Wow, I don't know. Two and three are like tied to me. I really like both of them. Yeah, I was I, digging I, I three. I flip flop back on back and forth. I lean towards three being the best because it's just it the end of the tr yeah. trilogy. Yeah, yeah. But two is really good. I, one for me is is third, but one is still a very solid film too. And, you know, and how rare is it that you get actually a solid trilogy of anything? Like yeah. they're all three of them are great. Yeah, if you're if you're at all curious about kaiju films, kaiju films, and have seen um, any Godzilla films, and and kind of taken a liking to these, the the Gamera trilogy is 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 really fucking good. They're all on Amazon Prime as well as the original '60s black and white movies. But I would recommend these three movies if you're bored, you need something, you will enjoy <laughs> it, and you're gonna want to see the next one. I can't, uh, I can't wait till you watch. I want to see the old one. The old ones. But but just great craftsmanship, you yeah. know? Oh, yeah. Again, something you don't see. Shit made by hand and filmed. Yeah. I mean, that's all made by, like, you know, that, that set where they're fighting inside the train station. Yeah. They had to the build The trellis, that. the whole trellis, the dome, all that shit. And then they just blow it up. So much fun. Just yep. destroy it. All right. That made me think. And from our earlier discussion, I was like, I'm gonna give, I wanted to give you an assignment. Okay. I was like a group of movies, a, a set of movies, maybe a connecting thing. My first thought was to give you a bunch of these crazy time travel movies that I love, but I've changed my mind based on our earlier discussion. Your assignment is to watch fucking Matrix 2 and Matrix 3 before Matrix 4 comes out because we are going to be reviewing Matrix 4, so you're going to need to be caught up. Okay. Remind me as we get closer to December, and I will... because. I would like to watch them. Oh, like a close. few weeks out. Okay. Yeah, so that I okay. remember what's going so on. So we'll start. I'll remind you the beginning of December. I'll give you 22 days to watch two All right, movies. I can do that. And then we can review Matrix 4 on the show because it's kind of wild that we get to review a Matrix movie <laughs> in 2021. It Who is very wild. One last Gamera guess? question. Yes. Cooler monster, Godzilla or Gamera? You know what? I really, I, there's something about Gamera that's very endearing. Yeah, he is very endearing. I dig it. I dig the shell. I dig his like motives. You really get his sense of like morals. Godzilla I, is great, but I I love the design. I love the two tusks. I've seen some of Lenny's pencil drawings of Gamera, and they're fucking great. I'm with you. I mean, I I always like Godzilla maybe more, but Gamera, you know, on paper you're like, oh, fucking giant turtle. How cool could that be? And you watch. The old movies are kind of cheesy, but there is something very endearing about the character and the way he's written. And yeah. especially in this trilogy, it's it's you, especially by the third, you're like, holy shit, this fucking it's a cool looking character. It is. And here's the thing. He can fly. It doesn't make fly. sense. But you can do a lot more things now with the camera than the Godzilla. Cooler he can fucking roar, fly. Godzilla or camera. Oh, that's going to be uh, I have it here. That's got to be Godzilla. Godzilla is a classic. It's Although more cameras iconic. is, you want me to? I used to do these as a kid. Let me see if I could still do. Oh, it. you can do it. Run! It's Godzilla! Wait, I like this one. This new Godzilla is unfriendly and he's going to destroy your country. There's nothing you can do about it. Gamera's got like a like a whiny roar. He's got kind of a squeaky roar. Yeah, yeah. it's a little squeaky. <laughs> yeah, the roar isn't as iconic as Godzilla. I mean, I remember both. Like his roar is is so distinct in comparison to Godzilla's. That I still remember it. But uh, it, it's a close. It's very close to Godzilla. I really dig this camera. Like it was a lot of fun. And like I want, I want, I want more about him. I want to know more. Every about kaiju him. fan. I don't know if they've let go. They might have let go of it by now. Maybe not. Every kaiju fan in the nineties. Was always like, when can they make a Godzilla versus Gamera movie? When can yeah, they do why it? Why haven't they done that? Well, Gamera is so Gamera was part of Die A Studios at at most of its time. Uh -huh. Die a film, um, which was a competitor. Although now I think Toho owns Die A, so I guess they could. Yeah, just it'll be good for both teams. Just buy them or just do a fucking Disney bought Fox. Same fucking thing. I don't know. Just yeah, do that. I don't, I don't know why they don't ever do it. To be honest with you, you clearly that, have be a good similar... question for Bellotti. 
Yeah, I mean, they're similar things, and you could, I mean, I, I think it would be like a Batman versus Superman, Godzilla versus Gamera in parts of the world. People oh, will Toho, lose their shit. Toho distributes the film, but I don't think they make I think well, I, I don't know why. Wait, that'd be, that's a good question. It's a good question I, I, that I just asked myself. That would be sick. Can you, do, is, do you think Gamera has enough cachet to get a Godzilla mainstream Hollywood treatment ever? No, no, no. The no. Gamera is so niche. Oh. Unfortunately, I don't know if we'll ever see a Godzilla versus Gamera made by Americans. Yeah, we're stuck with the King Kong and the Godzillas. Yeah, that's more, more important. Good stuff this week, Rugs. Uh, we'll miss you. We'll we see miss you, next you Rugs. Week. Hopefully, uh, he's always here. Hopefully, we get a, a variant. Even a variant version of you is better than not having any Fuck of you. Fuck that show. Although the hand is definitely uh, gotten some rest, and I think feels a lot better about moving into next week. Yes, it's doing some finger stretches, yeah. a little hand massage, maybe a mani, maybe just a man. The, think, you know, ma- uh, manicures are cheap. It's just the one hand. Just I think do a the manicure is, is much needed to. To take care of where that hand's been. <laughs> the new variant Rug Boy would be shipped in next week. Don't worry, listener. Uh, in the meantime, uh, follow Rug Boy at Really Rug Boy. Follow us on Twitter at Jock and Nerdcast. Visit the show notes for this episode for all the links. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for being there, hanging out with us every week. This has been the Jock and Nerd Podcast, and my name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. He's the Nerd. We'll peep you next time. <laughs> What the fuck are you all standing around for? Get your hand off my face!